Man, does this infuriate me. Oh, my man Walter sent me this video from Vox. I thought Vox went out of business. Maybe they didn't. Vox, I don't know. Some of these left-wing things went out of business. And it's just, it's so absurd. And it's, there's a couple of academics on here. And I just, was Teresa. Teresa Jill Giller Ducci, I think is how you say her name. I just, I, I, I cannot fathom the either ignorance, ignorance just means you don't know, or deception. And if you're an academic, there's no excuse for ignorance. And if you're no, if you're not ignorant, then you're allowing people to be deceived with your insanity when it comes to retirement. And here's look, check this out. It's got a video. It's got a video they just did on Vox from just um, a couple weeks ago, already half a million views. And here's Teresa, very happy because the money couldn't be accessed by you. What money is she referring to? The pensions that everyone used to have access to. She talks about a coal miner and a lawyer. They used to have access to pensions. Employers have put money in those professionally managed by people we control that couldn't be accessed by you, the minion, because you can't control your money. We don't want that. And it's just not true. It's blatantly a, a deception or ignorance. One of those two, it can't be. Maybe it's a little bit both. I don't know. But it, this is blatantly not true that people had these pensions. And I say people, the majority of people. The, I mean, what, about half the workforce even had access to a pension. How many of those people actually took the pension? Not very many. I don't understand why she keeps allowing this. It's insane to me. And then she says, they sit there, they interview these people and say, I don't have anywhere near what she say. You need a 10 to 15 times your salary at a certain age or something like that. I'm like, why? Why would you say that, Teresa Gurdel, whatever that name is, Gucci, Gucci bags? Well, I just, why would you say that? I'm 53. What do I need at? 15, 10 to 15 times my salary right now. Why? Well, if you want to maintain your standard of living. I don't want to maintain my standard of living because my standard of living is going to change dramatically by the time I'm 60. All my kids will be out of the house. My mortgage will be paid off. We'll go from four cars and a big five bed, four bath house on an acre and a half. We're going to go from that. We're going to downsize. We're not going to have to pay for braces. We're no longer have to pay for student loans. We're no longer have to pay a mortgage. Our health insurance will be significantly cheaper. Our auto insurance will be significantly cheaper. When we travel, it won't be six. It'll be two. Why would you say my standard of living? What is this idea that my standard of living stays the same when I'm freaking 35? And they say you got to have, what, five times your salary at 35, 10 times at 40. I don't know what they say. 15 times it's 55, whatever the hell it is. Why? Why would my retirement preparedness be based on my standard of living when I'm when, when I'm certain ages? And, and uh, Francis Mogla, listen, Mogladani, something like that, I think he won the – Nobel Prize in Economics for the Lifestyle Consumption Theory, whatever. You know, basically, it's a, it's a bell curve. And we can argue all day long with that, which we should. But there is some called consumption smoothing, i.e., you spend more when you're younger because you're raising your family, you got mortgages, you got car loans, student loans, the whole thing. You spend less when you're older because that's all gone. This isn't rocket science. Well, what if you don't have a family, Josh? Is your spending going to stay the same when you're not commuting down a bucket as it was when you're just sitting around freaking, I don't know, playing golf? We have numbers on this, and she has to know this. And then look what they say. Look what they say. I mean, I can't believe 11,000 thumbs up. I just can't believe 11,000 people said this right. Uh, by the standards of most financial experts, according to who? Vox? Most? What? Fidelity? And Teresa here? Americans are woefully behind on saving for retirement. It's funny how they always say that, and they always forget to say, you're paying 7 point, what is it, 6 five for FICA and Medicare. You're putting a lot of money away. Why do they always forget that? But, uh, woefully behind. The reason is rooted in changes to policy to our retirement system that happened 40 years ago. That would be the advent of the ERISA, which happened in 1974. That'd be 50 years ago, but be that something. But standards, uh, our policy, our retirement system is today is being is flawed design and how people set aside money so they can one day stop working. A flawed design. All right, so they're going to say one culprit lies in the changes in the country's pension system, which sets the U.S. apart from countries like Austria or the U.K., which these places have systems which help more people save more money for retirement. Uh, the U.K. Social Security is nothing compared to Canada is freaking a third of ours. You know, you know what I'm saying? We do have this thing it's called Social Security. I, I don't know if you guys didn't know this at Vox. There's something called Social Security that we pay 6.2%. I pay 12.4% because I'm self-employed. I'm just throwing it out there. 
If I make hundred thousand bucks, twelve thousand four hundred goes to Social Security. That's not savings enough. That's not enough for you at Vox and Teresa Gurdelli, Ducci, whatever her name is. Look, she right here. That money couldn't be accessed by you. Very happy. We don't want access in your money. I, this so the whole thing's so stupid. Yes, if our standard of living maintains as a forty-five year old raising a family, as a seventy-five year old without a family, uh, okay, whatever you can make the argument. Maybe not same enough, but then you got to factor in too. Well, Social Security. How much you? How much these guys want us to put in? What caused ERISA to begin with, Teresa and Vox? What ERISA Employee Retirement Income Security Act? What caused that to happen? Oh, the pensions were underfunded and they're going kaput. The Studebaker pension. I've done tons of videos on this. The reason ERISA came in, and we can, I, I'm not going to go into here because it's just, it bores me now. The reason ERISA came in is because many people thought they had pensions and they did not have anything. Hmm. So we had a, the pensions that Teresa, watch this, what she says here. It's crazy. It's freaking nuts, dude. Expect to retire because of the design, the pension systems that they had. Put money into a big pool of money that you had no access to, but you could expect it to be there when you retired. And why did ERISA come into being, Teresa? Oh, because for many people, that money wasn't there when they retired. Ah, how can you not know this? It's just, it's, it's insidious, insidious, whatever the other word is. I don't even know what this word is. I can't, I don't want to play this video because I don't know if I get copywritten or whatever. She's, it's just the reason why a coal miner and a lawyer could expect to retire is because the pensions. It's just not true, Teresa. And you have to know this. You have to know this. So we got rid of it. We implemented ERISA to basically save the pensions because many were going kaput. All right. We know that for a fact. Was the A was it not A and P? It was another I was reading about a couple of weeks ago. I can't remember. It's a it may have been A and P actually, a grocery store. And it's just it's not even this isn't even debatable to me. I, look, I'm just a guy in my t-shirt, my dogs, dude. I happened to shave this morning. You're lucky I even changed my underwear, but I did. I know this. You anyone can look this stuff up, dude. I just, it's so infuriating because these people sitting there, I don't have anywhere near what I need to have for savings, according to most experts. Well, most experts are full of crap. They don't know anything. Who are these experts? Her? They got some guy from the Pew Charitable Trust saying the same thing. I'm like, you guys just freaking suck. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You guys suck. Our social security system is significantly better than UK's, I don't know about Australia, significantly better than freaking Canada, without question. It's not even debatable. You're putting in 6.2% of your income into Social Security. Your employer is matching that. I was just talking to these guys today. About half their Social Security is not going to be subject to taxation, even when they have RMDs, required minimum distributions, because of the way Social Security and the tax code work. Very, very favorably. They're going to be living off $140,000 a year. This is in the future dollars, but still $140,000 a year because the tax uh, rates do adjust with inflation too. They're going to pay like 8000 bucks a year in taxes. <laughs> No Ross needed, by the way. None whatsoever. Dude, come on, Teresa. Why, why are you doing this? I just want to ask, why? Why Is the new school that... I, wasn't John, not John Kerry, it was Bob Kerry. Wasn't he like their moderate guy, the new school, many years ago? I think they hounded him out or something like that. Why do you do it, though? Why, why do you perpetuate this? Let's read some of the comments here. I'm I just so, so sick of this. I put a comment on here. I said, Dear, whatever her name is, has to know what she's saying is wrong. How can she possibly allow people to believe that everyone had pensions back then? It's simply not true. Not even close to true. And as an academic, she must know this. Yet she keeps on saying this is not only wrong, it's pure evil because people are working crappy old jobs much longer than they need to. Many are dying before they had a chance to retire because they're afraid to run out of money. It's a sad state of affairs the academics and professionals are telling people. Yep. Um, I love how they completely ignores people make less than a hundred thousand bucks. Well, because this is Vox. They only they had interviewed four people all making more than her. One's a college professor and a playwright making like 180. One's a nurse, she is retired making a hundred. Some other lady was a communications VP, and then some other guy was they're all making over a hundred thousand bucks. Because Vox, remember the Democrats are the working people, they're for the working people. No, they're for the rich professionals. We know that. I can almost guarantee none of them have kids. Uh, the average salary in the U.S., well, we're looking at median salary, but we'll go with the average, is around 50 to 60. Using these people with salaries above 100K suggests the reason why people don't save is, a financial, is financial literacy. No, it's not, it has nothing to do with financial literacy. They are saving. Why is it? Yeah, right now. This does not. Uh, why Americans can't retire? Featuring four upper class individuals who are terrible at managing their expenses. 100%, dude. You're getting it. This ace is high is getting it. 
Yep, just nine percent of workers are on Vox. That's not Vox is look. Don't you guys understand these liberals, these coastal liberal elites? You're not their target audience. Your target audience is the playwrights who happens to be a college professor who reads the New York Times and probably submits a letter to the editor of the New York Times every couple months. That's what their target audience is. They're not you. They don't care about you. I'm not saying the Republicans care either, but I'm just saying at the end of the day, come on, enough of the liberals like they care about the poor people. They don't. They could care less, the working poor. Sir, this is an eye-opener video. I would be retiring in five years. I'm curious to know best how people split their pay, how much it goes to savings. I'm not, that sounds like a that sounds like a bot. America is currently plagued by the hydra-headed evil, uh, evil dual inflation and recession. The worst part of this recession, because all right, whatever. Um, yeah, right here is funny. The guy shaking, saying he makes one hundred fifty thousand and one hundred thirty-five, saying that's not bad is hilarious. That's like double the median income, annual household income, one hundred percent. Yeah. How do you earn six figures not able to save? Uh, 100%. Anyway, that's, I just saw one other thing here real quick. Retirees facing financial struggles often is saving up during their active years. Retirement choices are critical. As for investing, now is a good time to buy stocks. Oh, boy, that's not a good job. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, I, uh, here's a bot. I can tell it's a bot right here. You know why? It's because it got 857. Uh, well, I guess that's not 857 likes, but... Uh, uh, but... Yeah, well, whatever. The more I find about American finance, the more I start to think of being born in Eastern Europe was it so bad after all. Oh, whatever. Like, get the hell out of here. Then. Go back to Eastern Europe. We don't want you here anymore. Anyway, I'll put a link in the video if you want to read it or watch it and just shake your head knowing that you know the truth. And this isn't it. It's just, it's disgusting. All right, we'll see you. God bless.